Hi, I'm Francho Vueta. Hi, and I'm Marguerite Skuman, and we are talking about money in a very practical way from a heavenly perspective. Welcome. Hello, Francho. How's it going? Uh, it's just well with me. It's well with me. It's nice to have you here, and I look forward to our little discussions. It's our first episode, so I yeah. hope it is going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm pretty excited about the topics we're going to discuss. It is it is questions that have come up, come up a lot in just my social life and the circles that I've moved in. So I'm pretty excited about what you've got lined up. I'm not pretty sure if I'm all that prepared, but we'll see what, what further reveals through this. Um, so let's let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Okay, so maybe just a little bit of a little bit of background. I am <laughs> just talking about money and um, in, on every possible platform and just kind of trying to learn and you know get as much information out there because as you know the church for a long time haven't spoken about money and we're kind of scared about what it is and uh, a lot of fear goes with it but um, God has really given you a tremendous download and understanding on kingdom finance and kingdom governance on money and I think that is um, why I'm excited to to learn from you and to get some get some juicy stuff from you. So maybe just for people who haven't seen you or don't know who you are, maybe just give us two sentences. Who's French lines? Yeah, a little bit. Well, Franjo is an ex-engineer who just got tired of being in a very sterile environment. Um, I know all of us want to create and want to be creative. And the employment scene has not really allowed us to do that. And so I stepped out of that to Father's grace. And he just allowed me to step into being an entrepreneur, a business owner, and just actually just stepping outside of the box, not thinking outside of the box, completely getting outside of the mold and getting fresh and new perspective and just pursuing life from there. And so you would think that my revelation comes from inheritance or that I come from money. It is actually not the case. Um, even though I have family members that have been successful in the entrepreneurial scene, um, people call them farmers as well. So I've got a strong farming community, but I've got a very strong um, community or family side that's been in ministry all their lives. And like all of us know, we've, we've had a mindset that you have to be poor to be a good Christian. And that is something that just never sat well with me. And I just decided I was not going to follow that same group. And so I went to study something that would make me money. And it made me completely unhappy. And so that was definitely not the answer. And so now we are in a position where we are saying, okay, what does father want for his children, for his business partners, for his entrepreneurs, for the people that really just partner with him and what he wants to establish on the earth. And so that is where this discussion with me and father started. And at the end of the day, this is where we are now with a lot more revelation and something that is just very unique to the way I approach things. I'm a fun fundamentalist. And I know it, in religious context, it is seen as a very religious or uh, person that takes the Bible very literally. But it actually comes from the root word in the Latin, which we derive foundation from. So I'm a foundationalist, if you want to put it like that. And it makes you very agile if you know and understand the foundation principles of the kingdom, because what happens on earth is a mirror image of what is already established in heaven. And so I try to distill everything that we have as a mystery, as a revelation down to practical stepping stones, to foundational stepping stones, so that you can use it in in every situation. And so that has been my aim. That has been the focus of creating language around it. And so that's the way fathers led me because we sometimes, most of the time actually, we get stuck in the revelation, in the mystery, but it's still a mystery. Even though we understand some parts of it, we, we can't apply it practically. We can't reteach it to somebody else in a way that it provides them with an inheritance. Um, with wisdom, with knowledge, with understanding. And so it is about bringing language that you can apply in your everyday life and that makes you 
responsive and not reactive. And so yeah, that is more or less the way I approach this. So when we start with the questions, that is what you're gonna hear. That's what you're gonna see. Me being very engineer-like, very practical, um, but I think it is good. Oh, great. I look, I look forward. And um, with, this first, with this first question, um, I remember we visited not too long ago while you guys were in Gauteng. And around the dinner table, the conversation kind of went into what is money, um, you know, and what, how do we think about money? And then you started to explain something that I have never in my life heard before. Um, you know, I kind of knew it, but like you say, say there wasn't language to it. Um, you know, for me, it was, yeah, this is what it is. And this is kind of how you see the world is going. But it was for the first time, like I could pinpoint it because you helped me to have language to understand it. So and, and, and two of the words you used was time and energy. And many times we learn that time is money and, you know, but where does energy fit in it? And is time money? So give us a little bit of, yeah, let, let's talk about time and energy. Yeah, it is. It is the way Father led me into this kind of this pathway. Um, he asked me that exact question: "What is money?" And normally you would want to answer it very cleverly and think that you know. And then you just you, you get a, a teachable moment. Uh, uh, there's the humility that comes upon you. Then you realize you just need to listen to what the Holy Spirit is going to whisper in your ear. And so it came down to me realizing just looking at the fundamentals um, and so that is kind of part of just taking everything apart and so I take everything apart until I can no longer take it, take it apart and money is what we use every day and when we talk about the word money the only thing that comes up is bills is currency is it's numbers but if you like you said distill it down to time and energy you realize that is what you exchange every day being an employee or being part of a business you trade with your time and your energy in exchange for something that you have in your bank account or that you have in your wallet and that is just a representation of your stewarding for a time period and so money is honestly nothing more than just time and energy it's the two things that you are freely given, born into this dimension from heaven. And so it comes down to the question then is, um, are we stewarding our time and energy well? Because if money is the trading facility of it, then are we trading well with time and energy? And so that is that, that struck a chord within my heart. And I was like, okay, Father, I really understand. Because I got involved with trading as well. Um, and so he led me on a journey with trading and he just asked me, when don't you trade? And so I wanted to be clever in that moment. I wanted to say when I meditate and then immediately I just knew that I spent time and energy. And so father just kind of, it was a, a, a stern but loving rebuke said to me that if you trade in every moment, you have two options. Either you trade for life or you trade for death. And by life and death, I mean that we align our trading with Father's plans, with His will, or we align our trading with something that is outside of Father's plans, our individual kind of just the um, idolatry that we have. Anything outside of Father is idolatry. So if we build outside of Father, we're trading into that. And we, we're creating platforms and trading floors for idols. And so I was like, okay, this, this, is, this, this opens up governance. This opens up stewarding. This opens up all of those questions just from asking what is money. And so at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, if you can't steward your time and your energy, how will you steward anything else that is in Father's kingdom that is more powerful than what is given freely to you? And so that is a that is that is a rebuke in essence to each and every one of us because Father just said to me, if, if your bank account is empty, if you don't have money, it is because you can't govern. Um, and it comes down to I don't know how to steward my time and energy. Look at people who don't steward their time well. Do they have money? 
most of the time the answer is no, they don't have money. And so that is that is a measuring stick for us to measure our lives against how heaven perceives time and energy, how heaven perceives money. And so in essence, um, time and energy is everything in this dimension. It is life. Nothing in this dimension does not function at the frequency. And so frequency is 100% energy within a time span, measured within time. And so everything that is alive is time and energy. Everything that you see before your eyes is money, is a currency. And so that changes the way we see creation. We see resources. We see all of those things. And we will definitely expand on those things. But My word, just, this is... <laughs> This, this is the first episode and you're deeping dive and you're deeping dive you're diving deep already <laughs> you know it is it, it, as, as you're speaking it, it's like the gears in my brain is just running already because you say that time the way that I spend my time and my energy has a direct effect on money and wealth in my life that is a direct effect um but and so if there's a lack or a abundance it is a direct mirror of what is where my time and my energy is but also and we're going to talk about scrolls and calling but how linked and how um in line and and how how those things are actually um also in line with each other so if i experience lack it is probably because my time and my energy is not reflecting what is in my scroll? So my time and my, my my time and my energy is not is is not spent in a way, and therefore I don't have the energy that attracts the money into my life that it should because I am actually not. And then in a big way, it's actually sin because then we are missing the mark. Hundred percent because sin is just imperfection. It's just missing the mark, and so it is walking outside of perfection, which means it's walking outside of who God is. So time and energy is the fundamental building blocks of this earthly realm. And so if we can't partner with time and energy the way Father created them to be, then how are we going to manifest anything? That is the question. And so we, we look at, we, if we just look at the financial system at the moment, we sit with things like inflation. And so inflation is basically inflammation of a, a financial structure. It is not healthy. It, it destroys. It is uncomfortable. Um, and the way Father explained to me inf um, inflation or inflating something was that it is because of indifference. And so if we take just the amount that mobile phones or cell phones um, are, are upgraded, it's like every two years, there, there's a new and better model out. And so as soon as you get your model, the advertisement for the next one basically comes, comes up. And so what happens is you start lasting after the next one before this one's use has even been just um, the, the, the full use has been being used and exploited. And so what happens is we never connect with creation. We never connect with the time and energy that is within the device that you own at the moment. You're already detaching yourself, becoming indifferent towards it, lusting after the next one. And so it is a principle that is within the Ten Commandments. Don't lust after your neighbor's things. Don't have idols. And so it comes down to intimacy once again. And so if we can't have solid relationship with time and energy, we will not have solid relationship with creation and creation will never respond to you because you don't have a foundation. And so creation will always see if it can partner with your capacity to steward time and energy because that is the measuring stick of relationship of intimacy, which is the opposite of indifference, which is the opposite of in inflation of money. Because if we have, if we hold true value to things, to just earthly things, you will see that it lasts a long time. And um, if you live in a house without maintaining it, it lasts longer 
than a house that just sits with nobody living in it. I've seen it. We have buildings like this in rural areas. It is, it is measurable. It's not something we just make up. And so that is what this episode is about, the first one. It's actually about are you intimately connected to how far the created time and energy and how time and energy is the fundamental building blocks of everything that you can see, touch, feel, perceive within the earth they are. It is also in the heavenly realm, but it functions a little bit different. And so if we can't steward it this side, like the scripture says, if you can't love your brother who you can see, how can you love Father or God who you can't see? So how are we going to steward heavenly things, the miracle, the miraculous things, if we can't even steward what was given to us from birth? And so that is why the govern, governance, the consistency, the relationship that we need to forge with time and energy is critical. It's non-negotiable. It is where we need to start. And it's not a complicated thing. So I think a, a good question to ask then is, how do we practically apply this? That was my question. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, and, and, and I'm also thinking, you know, I'm sitting listening to this, somebody else is sitting listening to this and thinking, oh, shucks, you know, I have kind of, you know, my time and energy is not, is not reflecting, you know, I feel kind of convicted with this conversation because I know that I'm missing the mark or I am not doing where I'm, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. So how do we, how do we get back to a place where time and energy start to make sense on that level that's so this is exactly what jesus came to do to open up the way for us to step back into the relationship with father to step back into perfection and so it is a restoration, restoration process that will take us there um, but restoration only comes by relationship relationship is by you spending quality time and focused energy singular focus being present if you go on a date and you are constantly on your cell phone while your date is across the table that is not a quality date that is um it, it is the scripture that that's why they didn't work out <laughs> it's, it's exactly the scripture that says you can't serve two masters you will love the one more than the other it's the one about mammon and so you can't have a dual focus to a kingdom divided does not stand it is about having singular focus and so it is about starting the conversation with father starting the relationship with time saying time i honor you and who you have come to be and how can i partner with you partner with energy father that you give me your daily bread um how can you partner with those things in a way that aligns with what father called you to be because if you are trading your time and energy into other things, you are not being a good steward. Father will take away what is given to you and give it to somebody who stewards it well. It is, it is harsh, but it's the truth. This is the way the kingdom works. We can't get around this. We, we must stop tickling our ears with, ah, oh, Father is a loving God. He's got principles in which everything functions. It's non-negotiable principles. And so it's the foundation. You can't remove the foundation from a building. The building will collapse and so we have to understand that these things need to be implemented so practically daily when you start your day you need to ask father uh what is my daily portion for today and with that comes what am i called to do today and we will talk about that in more depth what is your calling and all of that but then also if you know what your destination is you know how to position yourself to spend your time and energy in a way that you could reach your destination it might be a scenic route there's many ways to skin a cat but at the end of the day you are walking towards the end result which is in alignment with father which is perfection and so that is it's a simple question and it's it's the same way that you might be asking me question it opens up a realm of of knowledge of wealth of wisdom and so that's where we need to start just by honor because honor is you taking uh, taking the position of intimacy 
knowing somebody. If you honor some, somebody, you've got respect for them, you make yourself humble, teachable towards them, and that is going on a date. And so that is why intimacy will always be a key of approaching the, the, the problem because the intimacy is, is, is the solution. Wow. It, it almost brings me, um, no, no, it almost brings me, it, 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 it is the importance of living in the now and having, a, and having the awareness of, of that now is all we have um, and not living in that, in the, in the past or the present, or oh, in the past or the future, but, but, but living in the now and having that awareness and when we get, yeah, because this is the only time we really have is now and if we can steward this now moment, um, in a proper way and that could be rest or work um <laughs> you know depending on on where we need to be in this moment then yeah. then there will be um, fruit on it oh wow this yeah well for a first episode yeah i have something to think about Frantra, <laughs> thank you so thank you so so much um there's for me there's a lot to to i need to go sit and um practice some intimacy but um, we will do the next episode soon. And then we're going to talk about governance. That's a word you used a few times. Um, speak a little bit about governance. What is it? Why is it important? Is it biblical at all? Um, so in the next episode, we, we're going to go there. Um, but for now, I want to say thank you and see you next time. And for everybody who's watching, please, uh, if you want to connect with us, all our social media links are um, either on the screen or in the description in the bottom. So join us and um, see you there. Bye.